Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick. We're playing Stationeers. And today we're going to have a bit of a talk about our power grids. That'll be our power generation items we've got here, our batteries, our bat power storage, and our regulators and controllers. So first up we have the power generators that you actually start the game with. They come in your starter kit. They just come with your portable generator, your coal generator, and your basic solar panel. Now these ones will get you started. And first up, when you don't have anywhere to store the power, you're probably going to be looking at the portable generator. You just whack your, your canister from your welder in there, and you can pop a battery in it, switch it on, and away you go. You're recharging your batteries. Early game, that's the easiest way to do it. The gas in your welder is going to last you a long time. But that gets you an emergency charge on your batteries whenever you need it. And another thing you can do, I haven't seen many people do it, but you can get the power connectors down the bottom here as well. They allow you to wrench the generator down and it'll give you enough power there to then sort of run your, run your base. So next up you have your coal generator. That one will generate a lot of power. So uh, early game when you don't have a battery to store the, st store the power in, most of your coal is just going to go to waste. So um, wait till you have a battery before you start using that one, then it is going to be a very handy early source of power. So next up is your solar panels. You start with a basic solar panel, you'll quickly upgrade them to the adjustable solar panels. These will probably be the mainstay of your power. They cost, cost a bit to set up, but they are free power once they are set up. So they are going to be the main power supply for most of your game. We have the wind turbines. They have been recently upgraded in one of the patches there, so they are very much now worthwhile having. During a storm, they will produce five kilowatts, which is a, about 10 solar panels worth. So you only need a couple of them and they'll keep you powered during a storm. We have the gas generator, which is worthy of a, an episode all on its own. It does get quite difficult to use, but it provides a heap of power. So it's one you're probably a late game one that one there and you have the turbine generators they're well I've not really used them much but if you've got a vent gas from your furnace or whatever you can vent them into a little room behind one of these and as the gas flows out through the turbine it'll generate a bit of power for you it's a bit of power it would have just gone for waste but yeah take it or leave it but they are your main power generators that you'll have through the game. Some you use, some you won't. Depends on which planet you're on as to which ones will work the best. But once you've got the power, you need to store it. Storage devices we've got are your APC, which you can just drop a portable battery into, and that'll serve as a, a, as a base mounted battery for you. That's what you'll use early game. We have your small battery and your large battery which store a heap of power and can supply and store and store power a lot quicker than the APC will. So these two, probably you get, go the big one as soon as you can, will be your mainstay of power storage throughout the game. And then of course to hook it all together we have our cables, our light cables and our heavy cables. The difference, well, the difference between light and heavy cables is the amount of power they can carry. Uh, if you put too much power through them, they will burn out. So let's do some experiments, shall we? All right, so what I've, what I've got here is just a graph display with a cable analyzer just hooked up to its own power supply to actually read what's, how much power is going through this cable. So that's just there on its own power supply just to keep it out of the way of our experiment. Now our experiment, I have our power supply, which is an APC. Now that one is the smallest type of power storage we've got. I've actually hooked up a short circuit to it, so it's just a cable that goes from the input to the output, which is typically something you don't want to do. Okay, battery in. Now, when I switch this on, one side of the, the, the uh, power controller is going to try and put out as much power as it can, the other side is going to try and pull in as much as it can, so it's just going to have a continual feedback loop on it there. So when I switch it on, you should see the voltage climb and bang, we've blown it out. It tried to draw 7,000 watts, but this cable is only rated to carry 5,000. That's what happens when you overload it. There we go, a short circuit with heavy cable. Now, I haven't upgraded the power supply. It is still just using the APC. Uh, it does have a nuclear battery in it, so it provides a bit of power. We switch it on. We see that the 
it goes into its feedback loop where it is trying to raise more and more power and we can see the power running through the grid is just continually rising at the moment at 66,000 so it has far exceeded what we would have got out of the light power cable which is a good thing we've just spent a heap of gold making this cable here so we wanted to make sure it carries a lot we get our money's worth out of it but as it goes up this cable is rated to carry 100,000 watts boom there it goes 100,001 we've popped it out now it's short, just a short circuit is not the only thing that's going to burn out your power cables you can just connect too much power demand to it and it will burn out because you're draw, trying to draw too much from it now I've got my APC set up there's nothing short circuiting it so it's just the output trying to power a couple of air conditioners through a light cable so if we switch it on we find that there's not a huge power demand it's only 765 watts uh, with it at the moment where the air conditions aren't working too hard but if we change them to work a lot harder the power demand will go up and bang there we go we've blown out the power cable so true over 5700 watts and that's more than our power cables can handle so what do we do about that so this brings us to our next class of power devices. These are our power regulators, our transformers. So we have our large transformer, medium and small transformer. All right, so if we pop him into our circuit, like that, switch him on. Now it's set to zero, so our lights will not switch on. It's sort of saying, no, the maximum power you're allowed in that circuit is zero, so nothing comes through. If I switch it up to 100 watts, now I can switch on a light, it goes up to 50 watts, that's what a light uses. If I try and switch on another one, it says no, that's over 100 watts, I'm not going to let you have that power. So if I switch it up once again, we can continue turning on more, it says no, that's 200 watts, you're not allowed to have any more, and so on. So if we set that to what the limit of our power cable is, so if we say our power cable is 5000 watts, Boom, I cannot now draw enough power to burn out that cable. So our circuit is now protected. If you try and draw too much, your devices just won't switch on. So there's a way to protect your cables. Of course, it's not 100% foolproof because there is still a way to break down then if you're not careful with your cabling. Now, another way you can burn out your circuits is just by combining circuits. If I have two circuits, both protected by transformers, now here I'm not drawing much because I've only got lights on them all, but if I was drawing 4,000 watts from that circuit, 4,000 from that one, and then I accidentally sort of looking for some cables to connect, just running some wires and connected them like that, there would now be 8,000 watts running through these cables and it would just blow out. So that would be a bad one to do. Wait. I avoid doing things like that is just by simply color coding them. Uh, if I suddenly say, right, that's a yellow circuit coming from that transformer, and that's a red one from that one, I know that they're different circuits now, so don't cross them. So here we are back with my short circuit again. Now, if I switch that on, we will get a blown cable. There it is, it's over there. I hook that back up again it's now down here it's now over there so if you blow a cable you could be searching the entire circuit if you're in the habit of welding cables into walls that's going to be a real pain in the bum to go and find so even if they're hidden behind wall panels you still got to pull them all off to go and find it so uh, something you can do as an additional safety is to use a fuse now your fuse you get from the electronics printer, they're pretty cheap, but they have a number of varieties there. So they come in your 1 kilowatt, 5 kilowatt, 50 kilowatt, and 100 kilowatt. Now, it's probably mainly going to be used the 5 kilowatt ones you're going to use, because that matches the small power cable, and the 100 kilowatt ones will match the large power cable. Now they don't stop it from blowing, but they let you decide as to where it is to blow. So if I find an easy, somewhere that's easy to access, or somewhere that's quite clearly visible, now when I switch it on, it's blown right there. Just to make sure it wasn't a fluke, put in another fuse, fix my cable.
boom, there it goes, exactly the same spot again. So I'd now no longer have to search my whole base for that broken cable because I know exactly where it's going to be. The downside of that one is that I have to keep building new fuses because they are consumed in the, in the explosion. Okay, so how do we put it all together? Well, it depends on what stage of the game you're at. Early game, chances are you're going to be very basic setup. Maybe with just your portable generator and a single solar panel and your only storage that you've got is an APC. So one of the other things I like to do is attach my generator into the grid. I'm not going to use my large generator yet because it can generate 20 kilowatts and I just can't consume that. So most of my coal would go to waste. So I use a small one there. For early game, remember you are running on your welder canister there, so just don't use up all your fuel or you might find yourself in a bit of trouble. So I mean that solar panel can generate 450 watts on Mars at its peak efficiency. Uh, the cable can handle 5,000, so I've got nowhere near uh, enough to burn out that cable. And once again, just a transformer, and my entire base will be running off the single circuit because early bases just don't draw more than 5 kilowatts. So that would be my early game setup. I do like to colour my input cable from my output cable, so as I know, you do not connect a green with a red. As your base progresses, you've got access to a few more things there. So now we've now got a station battery. So now this one can can absorb the 20 kilowatts that the, the coal generator can put out. So I have a way of producing 20 kilowatts, a way of absorbing 20 kilowatts, so it's time to hook up the coal generator. Now the small cables can only carry 5 kilowatts, so it's time to jump into the heavy cables there. So now I now have heavy cables between the generator and the battery. Now the solar panels, I don't have many of them yet, so they still only produce 450 watts, or I think 452 watts on Mars when they're running at full efficiency. So I don't need to have heavy cable on them yet. I can whack 10 of them in a row and still use a light cable. But I mean, to, I then can't just connect it into the heavy generator as well. So I've got to put a transformer heading back that way to isolate the two networks. So that one will be carrying 20 kilowatts when the generator's on, plus whatever comes out of here. So whereas this one will only be carrying what comes out of this circuit. So the light won't come on while it's generating. It doesn't matter, it's still working. Coming out of it again, we've probably got multiple circuits hooked up now. So we have the heavy cable coming out of the battery because it can supply a lot of power if you ask for it. And each of our separate circuits are hooked via a transformer to the heavy cable, then into the light cable for each of them. Now you've got to remember that this cable is still completely unregulated. If you ask it to pull too much from the battery, it will provide it. So at this stage though, I know I'm pretty safe. I'm not drawing 100 kilowatts from my battery, so I can be relatively confident that I'm not going to burn that cable out. Now the good old APC, which was my battery storage, is now just serving as a backup power supply. So if I have a, a greenhouse or some sort of essential service there, which I want to make sure is always running, and doesn't go flat, or an airlock is another good one, you don't want them to run flat when the battery dies unexpectedly, that's just a backup power supply. So if the power shuts down, that one will keep going for a bit longer. And as we get into later game, you've probably got lots of things hooked up for power generators, so you've probably replaced the entire cable with a heavy kit, heavy cable. Wind generators are, now produce a lot of power, they're worth having. You probably have multiple batteries. Now you all the circuits on your base, you may be in danger of drawing more, more than the heavy power can handle. So it can be worth installing a large transformer between the batteries and the output power cable. And it doesn't hurt, just in case we accidentally put in a short circuit. This cable goes all the way through my base, through the entire superstructure and everywhere, and it would take a long time to chase down a fault in there. So. It doesn't hurt to put a fuse on that one, just so if something does go wrong, I know exactly where to go and fix the cable. As I say, the fuse is consumed, but in that case, I don't mind using one. Now, I've got my different coloured power cables. They are either side of the battery. You do not connect one side to the other side. Different colours don't match. Now, this one here, I have painted a different colour to a main power cable because this is an unregulated one. There is nothing to protect that cable. If I try and draw too much power from it, the batteries will quite happily oblige. So I don't connect anything to the yellow power cable, yet don't connect anything to the green power cable. 
through the transformer, then it becomes a red power cable, and I can just tap anything on that. I want to put another circuit, just whack another one into there. The APCs do not prevent a, a circuit overload, so you should always have them in conjunction with a transformer to protect that circuit. This is just a power backup, that is a circuit protection. Usually when setting up my circuits, everything on this circuit will be either associated with the same thing. So if I have a build a furnace, there may be a dozen things on there that need to be switched off when I want to shut it down. Instead of going and switching them each all off, if I connect them all to a transformer, I want to shut off all of those things. That's just one switch on the transformer, the entire circuit goes dead. And of course the multiple circuits allows you to reduce the power demand on each one, which allows you to use a light cable right through to end game. The heavy cable consumes gold, so I only use that where I have to, and that is the main power cable that goes through the base. That's the way I do it. I mean, once again, as always, there's many ways to skin a cat, but uh, that's what I've got. Colour your cables, use lots and lots of transformers. Radio. That's it for today, so until next time, happy building. See ya.